Very good. Yeah. Hmm. So, introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, so I'm Jon Harald Sabir. I work for Wikimedia Norway and I've uh, been a Wikipedian since 2005. Uh, and in like the recent couple of years, I've been become more interested in Wikisource. Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Nicolas Vigneron from France or from Brittany, depending on the proof. <laughs> and um, uh, I'm also Wikipedian since 2004, so 15 years now. And in Wikisource for 20 years or so. Um, we will introduce you to Wikisource today, mm -hmm. which is, I think, a very important uh, project, especially for the rich language. So let's start. Um, some background so what is Wikisource? Where does it come from? What does it do? Um, so it started in 2003 as a source bear. That's why the logo is an iceberg, so that's iceberg. Free. There was not a lot of people, so we did jokes. Um, at that time, it was only one multi-language website, like there is Commons or Wikidata. But in 2007, it split it in one project for each language. And uh, currently, there are 17 uh, languages who have their own wiki source. And some more are in uh, incubation in what we call the multilingual wiki source, where we have like 100 more or less live language or com community working on other language. And um, it is a wiki, obviously. I'm not sure if I should state the obvious, but we gather only public domain and free limits and text. And less for the background. That's mostly it. And the main goal, obviously, is to gather text. It's a, more or less a digital library. So the main work, but general, uh, we'll talk about it later, is to transform facsimile PDF text into real text that can be manipulated more easily, that can be data mined or put on ebooks or whatever you want. Once it's in the format of text, it's more easy to do whatever you want, translation or things like that. So you can mention that there are uh, currently two Celtic languages uh, yeah. that have their own um, their own subdomains on Wikisource. Those are Breton and uh, and Welsh, uh, while all the other Celtic languages are represented on the multilingual Wikisource. So even though there is no subdomain, it doesn't have the same restri restrictions as Wikipedia that uh, it's really difficult to write because on the multilingual Wikisource it's pretty easy to contribute even though. Uh, you know the language uh, doesn't have a have the menu, uh, and all the other Celtic languages are supported there, uh, and some of them have uh, a lot of content and some have less content. Yeah. If only uh, we knew someone in a Welsh library. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Some statistics. So it was done last year. So last year there was sixty seven. Now it's seventy. Uh, the Basque uh, wiki source is one of the last ones who have uh, his own language. So, in total, there's more or less 4 million texts. So, to put in perspective, that's uh, the, for instance, the British Library or the National Library of France has more or less the same number in, in texts, depending on what you call text, because uh, it can be like an haiku or three lines or an encyclopedia. Not uh, very much on that. So, but French Library, National Library, or British Library mostly are in one language, majority language. This is uh, 4 million text in a lot of language. Um, and you can see that there is some, like for Wikipedia or anything in life, there are some big languages that have the majority of text, and some, a lot uh, of languages, uh, very, very few texts. Um, the Welsh library, uh, the Welsh wiki source, for instance, has very, I think, like 100 text only. So, we have a big one. Uh, but as you know, there's lies, damn lies, and statistics. So, it's not because it's a big cycle here that it's a big community or things like that. For instance, you see that the English Wikipedia and the Polish Wikipedia has a very, very big cycle. They have a lot of text, but the, they I'm not cheating because they have a long, uh, lot of short text. For instance, on the English Wikipedia, when you have a dictionary, they do one text for each article of the 
biography of Oxford uh, Dictionary by Tant, and it's inflated a big, uh, big uh, number of texts. So that's why. And for instance, one of the most active wiki source community right now is the French one, but they are very active, but it's still a, a small one. And in minority languages, for instance, the Breton wiki source uh, where I work a lot uh, is uh, there's only five people that are doing quite a good work because they work every day. Um, okay, so, yeah, don't dwell too much on statistics. And then to more be about more concrete, I think. Yeah, uh, we should also, also mention that uh, the wiki source communities, especially in uh, languages of India, are yeah. booming right now. There's a lot of activity going on uh, in several of them, and they have like uh, competitions, and uh, it's very, you know, it's pretty. Uh, yeah, <laughs> because there was some technical problem problem with that source, so now we can work. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the workflow for uh, working on uh, Wikisource is that uh, well, there are a few different ways, but the main way we do it uh, nowadays is that you have a scanned document, which is like an entire book or a uh, newspaper or an article or whatever, uh, and it's scanned like as a PDF. Uh, and then you go through each page and you uh, transcribe what is there. But luckily, you don't have to like write everything down because there's OCR. Uh, and if the source of the file is good, then the OCR will be part of the file. Expensive. Yeah. So uh, does anyone know what OCR is? <laughs> no. No. OCR is when you have like a scanned text and the computer interprets that text into you know uh, actual letters. Uh, but OCR can be, it can be, you know, depending on the calibration, it can be pretty good. But for some languages, uh, like me, I've worked with the Northern Sami languages, and the OCR for Northern Sami is horrible. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, so, in those cases, you might end up like, well, for, for me, I found out that uh, uh, actually just deleting all the OCR text and just typing everything myself was more efficient than trying to fix all the errors that came from the OCR. Uh, so it's a little bit more time consuming, but also kind of therapeutic. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you will have a PDF file and you will upload it to, to Commons. Uh, and I put an asterisk there because there might be some cases where you will upload it to the local wiki source instead of Commons, but that's... Uh, Normally, it's just on comments. Uh, and after you have, uh, after you've done that, you create an index page on Wikisource, which is sort of like the um, uh, the place you work from. Uh, and I will show you in a minute. Uh, and then you proof it all the pages, which is basically just uh, adding, like making sure that the the text is correct uh, according to the scanned page. Uh, and then you add the wiki formatting to you know add bold text, italics, or centered text, or whatever. Uh, and then there's the validation. Uh, so I will show you how this works. Uh, let me see. So here is a. Uh, this is from uh, a law about uh, reindeer herding in Norway, and this text is actually actually pretty interesting because it's uh, uh, it's bilingual. So one page in, is Northern Sami and the other page is in Norwegian. So this is Northern Sami with a very old and incredibly impractical orthography. You can see how many different signs they use. They have like, I think they have five different variants of the letter P. Uh, and typing that in is uh, very difficult. <laughs> Uh, so I actually had to create like some JavaScript tool, but that's not something you normally have to uh, uh, consider doing. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, when you edit the page, uh, well, first I will show the index page, sorry. Uh, the index page looks like this. So it has the exact same na name, file name uh, as the file on comments, which is how it transcludes the file. Uh, and then you have a list of pages down here. And you have also have some data like title, when it was published, who published it, who wrote it, uh, whatever. Uh, and then you have the pages down here. So when you've just uploaded something, then this will be uh, red links. I can show you that in a minute. Um, so 
Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll go somewhere in the middle. So this is the, the Northern Sunny page. Uh, and when you edit it, you, uh, you click edit. Uh, and then you make sure all the text is correct here. Uh, and when you're done, you can change the status down here. So this is, uh, there are actually five different statuses. Uh, there's no text because sometimes the scanner will have like a blank page or a page with just images or whatever. Uh, and then there's uh, this one, which is raw, which means you haven't done anything with it. You just basically save the OCR uh, thing. And raw is the default state for a page when you just it. Yeah. Uh, and then you have uh, incomplete. This is what you will use if, uh, yeah, if, if the scan is like uh, you know smudged or they like chopped off a bit of the page or whatever, so you can't actually uh, confirm what is there. Then you use this, and it's used very rarely, especially if the uh, if the scans are good. So I mostly work with uh, scans from the Norwegian National Library, and they have like. A, Amazing facilities for this. And they scan a book in like 15 minutes and, uh, and it's done. But some scans, especially if you get them from like Google Books, uh, they did like a scanning project, but that was uh, when they started, the technology wasn't really all there yet, so some of their scans are really bad quality. Sometimes you can see the end of the people yeah. holding the <laughs> Yeah, thank you. <laughs> exactly. So that's when you use the blue problematic thing. Yeah. Status. Uh, and then there's the status that this page has, which is proofread, which means that uh, I have gone through it, through it and you know added the formatting and whatever. Uh, and then there's the fifth uh, status, which is validated. But which since I am the one who saved this page, I'm not able to validate it. So you need a second pair of eyes to do that. So uh, it's sort of like a I'm sure uh, I think the terminology might be a bit weird because uh, what we call proofread validated is actually what normal people would call proofread, but uh, still. But basically it's red, yellow, green, and it's better, better print. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so since this page is, uh, uh, this book is bilingual, uh, the next page here is in Norwegian. But the transcription of that was done on the Norwegian wiki source and not the multilingual one. And there's actually uh, like a tool to uh, transcribe pages from, or, or include pages from other domains. So you have a, if you have a book that is in you know Welsh and English, you can do those in uh, those different languages and then combine them on on the same project. Uh, yeah. Oh, and when you're finally done with the book, uh, you can compile it into, you know, the final product, uh, if you will. For the reader. So this is the uh, all of the Northern Sami texts. So there's like there's a lot, bunch of special syntax for this, which is not used on Wikipedia, so it might be unfamiliar for Wikipedians. Uh, but basically, this page, when you edit it, it just looks like this. This. Highlighted part is the important part. So it takes all of the pages that you have transcribed and puts them together into you know, one page. Uh, and this one has a special code for step two, which means it should skip every second page because that, those pages are in the region. Uh, so you have this page in Lord of Sami from the multilingual wiki source. And then there's the corresponding page in the, in the Norwegian wiki source. Um, so yeah. Uh, anything else in class? No. Hopefully we were clear enough. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully you want to work on Wikisource mm -hmm. after that, mm -hmm. and we are available if you have any question. Uh, maybe not right now. You've got a couple of minutes actually. Can yeah. I, yeah. Uh, can, can you give us an example of where you you use this? What is it mainly reference? Like reference books. That uh, well, since all books have to be public domain, it's mostly all the books. Yeah. So I just take every. I mainly work with uh, Northern, Northern Sami or other Sami languages for this. So I just take any text I can find and upload it and uh, and do this. 
it's it's not exactly it's wiki source, but it's not a good source for, okay. for Wikipedia, yeah. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> because it's primary source. So. Yeah, and they're all pretty old, so you know, uh, science that is mm -hmm. hundred years old should really be trusted. So. But sometimes some part of the text are used as an illustration, mm -hmm. like oh, uh, I did talk about uh, mm -hmm. a street in Penwin and have an article about it. In, mm -hmm. in the, oh. Ten years, uh, hundred years ago, they said that about the streets, but not just um, referencing anything, yeah. just illustrating with that. Although subjects that are contemporaneous with the, the book being published, so if it's an anthology of art, the artists, the biographical details are fine. It just might be the interpretation. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Might have aged badly, but yeah. it's quite good as a, as a source for births, deaths, and, and where they were active and where they were schooled, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the uh, and the point of like we uh, of Wikisource is to uh, put it into a format that is digital, obviously, so that it can easily be used. It like Nicholas said, in ebooks and whatever, so you don't have to actually read the scan yourself. Hmm. Uh, and here's the list of uh, like this is the main page of uh, the multilingual Wikisource. So these these are all the languages that have their own subdomains. And the bottom here are all the languages that are uh, hosted on the multilingual wiki source, but as you can see, there are plenty of languages that don't have Wikipedia or, or anything, so that's not a requirement for uh, hosting texts here. I mean, we even have texts in uh, ancient Egyptian. Yeah, I did so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, contrary to Wikipedia, you can have dead languages on wiki source. Mm. We can do that. <laughs> okay, well, yes. you, is there any other questions for John and Nick? Can I just make a recommendation to yeah. everybody yeah. that if you get fed up with editing Wikipedia, those of you that are editors, and you get fed up with all the, <laughs> the discussion and the argument and all the rest of it, a, a quick holiday over in Wikisource is very, yes. very relaxing. It's therapeutic. <laughs> very you can actually sit down and get something done. Yeah. Even, if it's just, even if it's just doing that second pair of eyes to do the proofreading. Exactly. Spend, spend half an hour when you've got one to spare on Wikisource and it pays dividends. Yes. Thank you. All right. Well, there's a recommendation for the weekend, if you will. So um, <laughs> I thank you both for that. That was really interesting. Um, so next up, you've got.